In the previous video, we talked about how we used Fox Render Farm to expedite our R&D and our rendering when working on our first animation project as a small studio. In this video, however, Vlad, our technical director, is going to be showing you exactly how we set up his Blender files and used Fox Render Farm to save us weeks in rendering. Now, we're not sponsored by Fox Render Farm, but we do have a partnership with them for our students. And I will be leaving an affiliate code down below for you guys if their services interest you. With that out of the way, I'll let Vlad take over. Hey, this is Vlad from 2Animate, and I'm here to give a brief overview of how we used Fox Render Farm to help us with rendering on one of our cinematics. So I'm gonna just cover the steps I took to get my file set up, uh, then uploaded and then submitted to the farm for rendering. So up here you'll see that we're in the GPU region. So we'll be using GPU rendering for these shots. And the first step is to upload all of the assets necessary to uh, this region. So for that, we can go to the assets section here. So what you'll wanna do here first is download the client. So whether you have Windows or Linux, uh, I'm on Linux here, and that will just help the web server to connect to your local machine. Uh, because when you upload these assets, if you have this maintain local directory structure uh, ticked off, then all of your assets get uploaded with their directories intact. So it mirrors it on the server here. So because I'm on Linux, I start on the root directory here. Um, if you're on Windows, it'll start on C. So here I have my home directory first, and then I have my user directory, and then desktop and all of the other directories as they appear on my computer until we get to the project and then I have the uh, assets here and the shots. So assets just has all of the props, sets, uh, characters, things like that. Um, again, mirrored exactly the same way on my computer so that uh, when the render farm loads up the files, everything will load up properly. So I've put up this shot here, uh, final render, farm, and then shot five render. So this is the file I'm gonna be rendering as a demo and I have it open right here. So to quickly go over what I set up, it's really nothing complicated. Um, essentially, what you wanna do is split up your different layers into different scenes. So if you have the background, uh, the character, which is the, just the hands in this case, and then the carving. This scene here, we kind of have this uh, animation of these hands carving out this character out of a wooden block. So it's a pretty long shot, so I just sectioned it off to 100 frames here just for the demo. And we're gonna be rendering the background and then the character with the chisel and the block. So I have the BG right here. And if I go to render, you can see that it's only rendering the background. And so the reason is because the objects that we don't want rendered on this layer are set to indirect. And the way you can do that in Blender is simply to go to the collection that the object belongs to. For example, here's the carving. I just right click view layer and set it to indirect only. Now there's also holdout, uh, but holdout will basically act as a mask. So anything that's behind that object will be masked out, it'll be cropped out, and you'll just see the background. So either the sky or just transparency. Now this is specific to this view layer and scenes can have multiple view layers. Uh, but once we put this file up onto Fox Render Farm, the server will be picking up on the different scenes that we've broken up our file into. So that's why we're separating it into separate scenes like this. And then from there, we can actually customize on the website a few different settings of how we wanna render this file. So if I go to the hands scene here, you see I've set it up so that the background is indirect instead and you have the hands by themselves and then I have the carving like this. Now for the render settings, um, the main things you wanna just keep in mind is of course the samples. So I'll just be rendering at 2K samples. Uh, most of the other settings here, it's up to you really, of course, uh, but I just chose the fast global illumination and uh, most of the other settings are pretty much just left at default. And then here in the output, I'm rendering this as open EXR because that will be useful for compositing later on. Uh, you can use multi-layer opening XR, and then that way you can render out uh, the different passes that you need as well. So you can have vector pass, Z pass, or um, any other pass that you want. Uh, but for this, to keep it simple, I will just do opening XR by itself to just get the final image. And you just wanna double check that everything, oh, the other thing too, is just making sure that the device, if this is meant to be rendering in the GPU pool, that you have all of your scenes set to GPU. Okay, uh, because the different scenes here, they will have their own scene settings. So you wanna just keep in mind that everything is consistent with how you want the scenes to be. For this layer, for example, I set this to 1K samples because this is just a less noisy image here overall. So I don't need as many samples. 
And that's it. So then I just uh, uploaded this file to the assets here so that this file right here, SHA-5 render, and all we're gonna do is just go to submit. So I will select the file here, select Blender, and then go to next config software. So here you just need a, a configuration. So here um, you just do my config, you just pick which version of Blender that you want. So 4.3.2 um, render system, you can just select Windows here. And then uh, plugins, I didn't use any plugins, so we don't need any. So just hit confirm. And then if that's selected, that's pretty much good to go. Uh, everything down here, I'll just leave by default. Uh, actually, no, the cycles render device, we can set to CUDA. And then you hit go analysis so that the server will now analyze this file here. So this just takes a moment here. Once it's done, you'll see it says analysis done. And if there are any errors, so if there's any assets missing or anything else, uh, it'll show up here. But in this case, everything's set up correctly. So I'm going to just hit continue. And then here, this is where we can set our frame range and then all of the different layers, uh, the scenes that we set up. We can adjust the resolution here as well. So I'm going to just set all the scenes to render. But uh, first here, you have test frame settings. So it's good to test out your file first before committing to the full render. So here it gives you the option to render uh, the first frame, middle frame, and last frame for every single scene that you have selected. So I'll leave them all enabled and then just hit submit to render. Quick little interjection. If you'd like to learn how to animate like we do, give to animate.ca a look. We spent three years creating a university level animation curriculum based on our own education at Canada's top two animation schools and our years of experience working in the industry. There's a ton more benefits than just lessons when you enroll in our animation course. So check out to animate.ca and see if we're a good fit for you. Now let's get back to the video. So now this submitted the shot to the render farm here. And if we expand this, you can see all the individual layers. So if I click on one of them here, you'll get all of the details for each frame and the current frames rendering here. So once these are done, a preview will show up here so you can check that everything looks good. And then from there, we'll be able to submit the full render. So I'll just leave these to render for a moment here. And then once they're done, we can see the result that we got. If there's any failed frames, which there looks like there is one here, uh, you can see the rendering expense, uh, all these kind of details here. So if I just go to this one, yeah, for some reason it failed, but we can just check this off and it just set it to re-render here. And in the meantime, I can check out these frames here. So if we look at this, that looks good. And that looks good as well. So we can check the others. So if we check the background, you can see, yeah, that looks good. Then we have our carving layer, which looks good to go. Yeah, that looks good. And then we can check on our re-rendered frame here, which looks like it rendered up properly this time. Okay. So now all that's left to do is just hit render full job and just hit confirm. And there we go. So now it's rendering all of our layers here all simultaneously. So I'll give this a few minutes here to uh, go through and finish. So we just check on it here while it's rendering to see how the progress is coming along. So it looks like it's rendering something like 41 nodes per layer, I think, at the same time. So we got 123 nodes in total. And there we go. All the frames are done. We can see the total duration here. Um, this is not the actual real time duration. This is the combined duration. Uh, of all the nodes. In real time, this took less than 10 minutes or so. So we got five hours and 44 minutes of rendering basically compressed into about 10 minutes, which is pretty cool. So I can check all the frames here. You can see they're all done and we can inspect any of the frames. And if everything's good to go, I'm gonna just go ahead and hit download to download them all onto my computer here. So I'll just choose this folder here. And again, you need the client here. So if I bring it up, you'll see the client will be packaging everything up and downloading it into the appropriate directory where the shot that we uploaded was located. All right, now I can just bring up my file browser uh, with the folder here. So it has the three layers downloaded separate folders, um, has the job ID, which is this right here in the title along with the file name. And then we can go in here just to inspect it. See, make sure the EXR files are in place. Um, now, I think I forgot to set appropriate file names 
in the output. So these are all going to be, yeah, have this same weird file output. So um, that'll just depend on the file output in each scene. So you can just set the appropriate name that you need. Uh, but yeah, it looks like all the frames are here and that is then ready to take into compositing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Make sure to check out our previous video on how we made Bob Awakens the cinematic. We talk about everything from communication with the client to challenging animation hurdles we had to overcome like adding time lapse in the middle of the cinematic. So go check that out.